Good morning. You've reached Venus Unplugged. This is your host, Lorraine Nightheart, broadcasting from Hell's Kitchen, New York. And what we uh, talk about here, Venus Unplugged, is the archetype of Venus and the principle of Eros, which is the principle of relatedness, and certainly about psyche, soul. What we've been looking at the last couple of weeks has been the four functions, which is principle, uh, a Jungian principle of the uh, four functions within psyche. Now, people say, why did he pick four? Well, he doesn't really know. He doesn't say he, you know, had a dream about it. It just, it's something he he gradually came to. Now you have to remember, you know, Jung was uh, struggling. Uh, this was a hundred years ago, or over a hundred years ago. So discovering uh, this man in Switzerland, and not a lot of shamans in Switzerland, especially a hundred years ago that we know of. And um, so this was something he came across. He began to realize that uh, there was the thinking type, and it's opposite the feeling type, and the intuitive type, and it's opposite the sensei type. Uh, So the principle of the four functions is that we are born with an inherent uh, function, that if we're not influenced too much, we will just develop naturally as children, uh, there are situations, more than I'd like to admit, that, you know, a child comes in with a certain, what is called superior function, you know, or the, the go-to personality uh, aspect. It's not even a personality. It's a function. It's, it's, it's how they deal with life, right? Uh, but can be very influenced by family uh, or misjudged. So let's say a kid likes to play with blocks, and everybody goes like, wow, you know, they're going to be an architect, or they're going to, you know, they're like a sensei type. They're going to do structural things. And they, no, it's not that. They're using their imagination. So they become uh, an engineer and uh, or work in architecture, and then by the time midlife hits, they realize, like, this blows. It's not my truth. So that's an example when it doesn't work. So the principle of the four functions is the first half of life as we're developing ego and we're developing a sense of self, right? Uh, We're going to go towards one of these functions. Then in the second half of life, the inferior function, the I that we don't know about, begins to kick up and we need to be able to explore and work with that blind spot. Now we usually marry or fall in love with someone who carries our blind spot and that's kind of the dynamics that makes us grow if we want to stick to a relationship and try to understand what in God's name are they talking about. We're saying the same thing, we're just saying it in a different way. So it's really quite remarkable that he discovered this fourfold function uh, or it was revealed to him but also the symbol of the number four it's linked to the to the cross and to the square and it is a a number of magic because it is the, the square is or the cube is the, the the function of life? It's a universal principle. So let's say you're if you're into numerology and you're born on the fourth, thirteenth, twenty second, or thirty first of a month, you carry this uh, dynamic. Now, when there's too much of a relationship to the four, people will block themselves in and then knock themselves out because it's a fixed number, right? And then finally they, they realize, well, wait a second, this, this, I'm being too limited. Or the positive side of it, or the other side, I think we need to start realizing the positive and the negative. Uh, they're, they're one and the same. And I think that's part of what, A, this 
lunar eclipse is bringing into us, that there's a big, big shift in consciousness that we're all part of right now. And that's why uh, so many people are really feeling it deeply. And what is happening? You know, it's happening in their own life, but it's also happening uh, in the world. It's happening in the cosmos. So the sacred number is the cross in the square, and it's in, from prehistoric times the number four has been employed to signify what was solid or could be touched and felt. So that's also sensate. We could touch it. We could feel it. Uh, so in relationship to the cross or the four points, it's uh, made uh, an outstanding symbol of wholeness and universality, and it's a symbol which will draw all to itself. So when the lines of the latitude and longitude intersect, they divide the earth into four proportions. And throughout uh, the world, kings and chieftains were, were called the lord of the four sons or the Lord of the four quarters of heavens. And that's how we understood the extent of the powers of these territorial beings. So this, the, just the number itself of the four, you know, anytime you hear that number, you've got to pick up your ears a little bit because it points to uh, a totality. It puts, and this is what is is happening in our world. Whether we like it or not, we are shifting into understanding. You see, the king, and let's say in fairy tales, right? The king must die because it's an old principle. So we're kind of looking at that in our world. The, the old king's principle, it doesn't work anymore. It's outlived. So in ancient times, they would be sacrificed. So in modern times, the um, same principle exists. So we're not going to have the king sacrificed, but we will find a way to sacrifice the king. Whether it's through reputation, whether it's through uh, impeachment, whether it's through uh, whatever way, war, whatever way it is, the king must go because the king is not living principle that keeps the world and the community and the four worlds together is outlived its purpose. Now, this isn't something we necessarily create. This is the structure. This is the psychic structure of humanity. What consciousness is, is we are aware so if we use, let's say, the principles of um, in fairy tales or in dreams, we see there is always this fourfold function, and we look at it as a coding, what is being told. So if we listen to our dreams, which is a direct link to, the, to your personal relationship with the divine, so even if you don't understand dreams and... Uh, you feel that they're useless, at least have the good manners to be respectful and say, okay, I find them useless, but I'm going to write them down or uh, write a little note to myself. Uh, that You know, whatever it is, you, can, you don't have to remember uh, the entire dream, uh, but you can just say, well, I dreamt blue or whatever it might be. You know, it's, it's respectful because it's, it's linking you. You've been told. Now, everything in that day or that week or that year is going to be guided for you to understand this psychic reality. That's the way that psyche and fate work together. And even when we're in a waking state, we're still in a state of dreaming. Let's say the third eye, which is the eye of clairvoyancy, and, and that's the eye that is the one that's connected to the pineal gland. And the pineal gland is the, is the exact replica of our eyes, only it is it views levels of consciousness, the future, the past. So it's we're all.
born with this. But usually by the time, by the age of seven, that's been shut down. Uh, because logic comes in, schooling comes in. We're not allowed to see that. Children are told, oh, that's just fantasy. It's just make-believe. But no, they're really seeing things. And, you know, if we could um, have a system where both both realities are working, and they're actually one reality or an aspect of, of one's reality. So what is happening now in the world as chaotic as it may appear, is we, we, humanity, and this may take a thousand years, you know, we're somewhere between here and eternity, so don't get uptight about time. Speaking of the fourth dimension, um, and the sacred number four, we're starting to integrate opposites because without integrating opposites, without choosing one over the other, right from wrong, above from below, they're, they're actually all one. And then we can see another possibility. Now, we don't know what that possibility is because we don't have enough exercise it, within, our, within our minds and within our thinking. Because there's absolute... There are so many realities going on. Uh, at the same time, but we're taught to split. This is good or this is bad. This is right. This is wrong. Now, it's not necessarily true. It's just taking sides. Now, could you imagine if we had the capacity at the appropriate moment to see the integration of two? I mean, there would be no fights about whose God is better or the masculine or the feminine. We would be able to see that they're one. We would be able to separate at the at the moment when they need the separation. But there, there wouldn't be this absolute. If you are other and opposite, it's my job to kill you off. It's my job to take your existence away. Where did we come up with that one? Instead of it's opposite because that's part of the divine plan. It's opposite because that's its otherness. It's opposite because we, uh, humanity, needs to be able to see. You know, it's like people say, oh, well, there's no UFOs. Well, guess what? You know, we're doing, you know, moon landings and Mars exploration. Guess what? We're the UFOs. So what are you talking about? There's no aliens. We're it. And yet humanity doesn't see that because of its spiritual narcissism, which it's loaded with. And that spiritual narcissism is about uh, the universe is there to be the busboy of one's personal evolution. Well, that's not true. It's the same as personal narcissism. It's annoying. And it's not true. So this fourfold function, okay, let's say it's a sacred number. And like in in uh, the Chinese or Vietnamese, Korean or Japanese, that number it's a very superstitious number because it it represents also the number of death. So they don't like it. Or uh, in the patriarch thirteen, which it comes to a four. You know, you'll see in like old elevators they don't have a thirteenth floor. It's like what happened to thirteen? I even noticed that you know in, in the hospital there's no. Um, 13, it's like 12 and a half. It was like, whoa, somebody had difficulty with that because also like 13 in particular is the number of the 13 lunar months. It's the divine feminine. And so that was, there's a superstition about that. So with the fourfold functions, if we can begin to comprehend say somebody is annoying you, if you could just say, hey, wait a second, is it really that they're annoying me or or, or uh, that they're wrong? Or are they coming from a different understanding? And that if we're flexible enough and certainly quick enough, we can shift. 
so that we can communicate. It's like being, you know, uh, able to shift languages to what? To speak to another or a world that needs to understand what you're communicating, but it can come through feelings or it can come through intuition or it can come through facts or it can come through logic. Right? All of them have a logic, a language, but we're prone to it. So when we want to, when we're, when we're not communicating properly or uh, creatively, all right, in, in another way, we can see, to, why didn't that person understand that? I'm being very clear. No, not if we don't understand what the other person's function, main function is. And what about that crisis, that midlife crisis, when everything hits the fan and we cannot understand what is happening to our life? We used to value that so much, and now it doesn't mean as much. Then we question, oh, Lord, like, did I waste the, you know, the first 45 years of my life? No, you did not waste the first 45 years. You were functioning from what is called your superior functions, your go-to personality, okay? And then in the second half, your inferior function, the part you don't know about yourself. But it's also a treasure because it hasn't, it's parts of yourself that hasn't been touched. So when we begin to look at, uh, you know, it's like every heart has a story. And every story has a sacred dimension. And without our stories, we don't exist. And stories always have a fourfold function. Or they're not a complete story. It's a three-wheel car. So what is happening certainly now in the world, like I said, if we look at it as a fairy tale and we see, oh, the principle of the king, like very often there's the story in, in a fairy tale, let's say there's the king and his three sons. And the first thing you need to ask yourself, it's like, well, where's the queens? Where's the sisters? Where's the feminine? So just by that, or somebody's telling us, a, you know, a story of current events, right? and we have to ask, well, all right, well, this is all the masculine, well, where's the feminine? Because that's the hint of the logic. Where's Logos? Where's, where, where is Eros? The principle of relatedness. Because chaos and war and uh, fighting, there is no Eros. And there's no relatedness. So Venus is lacking the Venusian principle of the feminine is lacking. So it's not just uh, beauty and seduction. It's eros, it's relatedness. And that's what we're looking at in our world right now. And also, these eclipses, this particular eclipse that we're going to have on the 21st is like the mother load. This is going to be the one where it's really... For those that observe evolution, all right, this is the one that shifts where we're moving out of our spiritual narcissism and our command that uh, we think everything is there for us, and we are going to begin to create a new order and a new principle. So, of course, there's all sorts of chaos. Or I shouldn't say no, evolutionary. An evolutionary link. Now, if we're not paying attention, it comes as a big surprise. If we're paying attention, it still comes as a surprise, but we know it's, it must. It's not there to destroy us. It's there to make us grow. And that's what all of this is about. That's what individuation is about. And this is, you know, if we look at it, that the ego, you know, the ego gets developed, it's, uh, it's a part of the, the, the stage of humanity, but 
it doesn't get a full life because the ego uh, is there. It, it grows and it thinks it's God. It thinks it's the divine principle. And then it begins to understand gradually that's in service to the soul. And again, that's what the midlife crisis is about or the second half of life where we begin to, and I think cosmically what is happening now is people are going to be much more interested in their inner world, or their inner world is going to be the only place they can go to to get a holiday from the chaos that's going on uh, in, in the outer world, and it must. Even if everybody was doing everything right, this everything that's happening in the world would still be happening right now because it must because of the evolutionary shift, awakening. No one wakes up in a good mood. It wakes up chaotic. Everything blows apart. And then we look at what pieces we have left. And those are the eternal principles. Those are, uh, you know, the, the, the parts of ourselves that will bring us to wholeness. So this fourfold function that we're we're exploring here, and if we use it uh, again in, in principles of uh, fairy tales, which are great teachings. So when the when the old king must die, ancient times they were sacrificed, or or a ritual was done for sacrifice. Uh, means that all principle is not going to bring the kingdom, our world, uh, because it's old and doesn't function, doesn't have the fertility, doesn't have the feminine principle in it to bring new life. And this is what we're looking at. So don't panic. Observe if you're standing in the wrong, on the wrong corner, which is another image of four. Let's say, you know, at, at, if you're uh, at the crossroads, right, and, and there's four corners. Hermes uh, is always at one of the corners, and then we don't know, well, what road do I go down for? Right? And uh, the ancients would put a herm, which is a stone, on one of the corners, and then walk down that road, and that's also how... Um, uh, crossroads and roads began to be made by people putting stones on those corners, and they knew, oh, oh no, take that road. That's the safe road. So that also happens within our psyche. We're putting down, we're at the crossroads of evolution. And what must change, it's going to change anyway, whether you agree or not because psyche is stronger than certainly ego, certainly evolutionary demands, and we can delay it and we can make it messy if we wish because we want to have mechanical ways of thinking, but it's not going to work. So the, the this fourfold function, that is why it is sacred. So, so the fourfold crystal, the four levels of logic, that what is happening when there's too much one-sidedness, it's not going to last forever. It cracks. As people, we, 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 we call that comfort or security. Well, what's secure about our life becoming smaller and smaller? It, it can't needs to grow. We need to understand that the psychological factors also correspond to the fact. And that if we're thinking mechanically, uh, this earth and this cosmos is organic. 
a living principle. It's expand, expanding and flowing and becoming. And we're part of that. So just by letting go, even just for a moment, you know, the things that we hold on to so tightly, the beliefs we hold on to so tightly, that continue to get us in trouble and continue to uh, become flatter and flatter uh, and don't really help us grow because that's the ticket. Growth is the ticket. Becoming, becoming, in a sense, you become. A, that's what the whole Jungian work is about. You're becoming. You're, you individuate. You take all these parts of oneself, and they become one. All right, and then you're not. So one-sided, you can flow between the four functions and you can use it appropriately. That's when people are individuated. They, that's the thing they can do. They can, when facts are needed, they can flow with the facts. And when the feelings are needed um, and, and feelings are values, what we value, and we can understand the value of a situation. But we don't choose one over the other. See, so when Eros um, is in a society and if it's influence its people, the people relate to one another. And we're lacking Eros enormously in our society. Because Eros is also the principle, it's like if, if, if... the living principle, let's say the king, okay, that's like kind of what the collective unconscious, you know, was, I don't know, it may go for perfection or, or technology or the bottom line or business. Well, that's wearing its ass out, right? But without, so that's the collective unconscious. So where's the queen? Where, where, where's the feminine element? Where's the emotions? Where's the feelings? Where's the irrational attachments to the... to uh, the dominant content. So, every civilization has its God image, which dominates the civilization. And with that goes a certain habit or a lifestyle. Okay, But on a, a feeling style, and that's when Eros' style in the society influences how people will relate to one another. And the feeling tone of this collectivity would be the queen who accompanies the king. So, we are moving towards more consciousness of the feminine principle. Uh, it's, you know, of course, its first wave is is um, the awakening of the remembrance of the goddess, you know, and all those uh, stories and uh, teachings. But now it needs to be heroes. Not the goddess as powerful, and uh, it needs to be. How do we relate? And it's the artists in all of us that are going to bring this eros principle in. Logos is the dominating principle. Eros is the accompanying style. Okay, it's the form on the feeling function. It's the relatedness to the unconscious, to the irrational, to what has been lost. So we need to relate to what has been lost, both in our personal life. Have we lost the joy of life, the the joy of just play, and that it's irrational, and you say, well, it has no purpose. It has tremendous purpose. The purpose is to, so that we can enter uh, the unknown uh, with a certain trust. That's what play is about. That we can imagine, we can use our image function to enter understanding that is irrational because logic it only gets us so far. There's Psyche's logic or Eros' logic. If this is what's happening and why everybody is a little bit on their ear right now is uh, there's a big uh, shift 
And the shift isn't one or the other. The shift is this four, where we always look for where are the four roads, the four paths, the four principles. It is the sacred. And the sacred isn't special. Spirituality is not special. There's the spirit of darkness, the spirit of the unknown, the principles of the shadow. It is all sacred. This prejudice that uh, uh, that one is spiritual, that doesn't mean anything. Are you human? Can you feel? Can you, can you have uh, compassion? Can you be a warrior when one needs to be and then stop on a dime and become the feeling one? We need to be able to, in that moment, whatever it calls for in our lives, that we can move to any one of these functions. Now, this isn't easy. It takes a lot of observation, uh, but uh, we're told pretty quickly because so uh, we see where we get into trouble in our life or we see where we're not communicating or we see usually at the heart of whatever the miscommunication is or the love battle is or you know work principles we're in trouble and we can't communicate properly somewhere your inferior function is being kicked up or being tapped on and it's we think it's the other person instead of saying oh no this person needs facts you know, I, they, they need to, you know, they need the numbers or this person needs to be able to be related to, otherwise it never happens. Or if I don't give them the logic, they're not going to get it. So we need to be fourfold. It's almost like a fan that opens up. So that's going to keep us very busy as we evolve, in, you know, in humanity. But it's an extraordinary time to be on this planet, and we are all part of this. So it's a great adventure, and at times it's terrifying, but so is becoming whole. It's not a pleasant experience. It's terrifying. Then you know you're in the right place. So till next week, we are going to continue on the four functions. Bye-bye.